to the Warren Finance Committee February 10th. Uh, call this meeting to order, and the first thing is to move the flag. Now we'll do the January 27th. 
seven fifty. Yeah. Separately. And I have a motion on uh, accepting the minutes of the January twenty seventh meeting. Well, uh, again, I'm sorry, Cal. No, I'd, like I'd like to do a small amendment to this, and I will explain it in a minute. Um, but in, in your write-up, Carol, which was excellent uh, on our discussions, um, the term town employees is used. Okay, and what I'm going to suggest is, or offer an amendment to replace any place where we're serving employees that we refer to uh, municipal officials and I'll explain the reason for that tonight. Now is that in reference Tom for the email from the selectmen? Well I, I think I think it was in what are you talking about? Uh, I, I know I can't amend the email from the selectmen. I appreciate the, that. The <laughs> but is that your reference? Uh, I, I think there's I think I thought, and I may be wrong about this. Let me go for a second on that. I'm not done. I have a question. Um, when you say town employees, to me that is all encompassing from the whole league. Okay, we're being fully employed. Vice President Jack. Carol? When you say officials, that says. My perception of it is that's the hierarchy in the run the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, so, yeah, that's, I agree with Virginia. Plus, um, I was trying to stick with the same terminology that the email referred to, which is, you know, incur, um, we will encourage employees to meet with you. Um, they call it staff, employees. Um, so I, I was trying to be consistent so that we were talking. I think we're, I think we're, I think we're making a mistake by doing that. That's the reason I'm going okay. to discuss on that. Okay. That I'm going to discuss. All right. Uh, well, I was just wondering, if, if, did they, now I heard that they called the, the, call the boards too, like the rep committee and stuff like that. Because here they just say town hall, Employees, the fire, the road employees, and the transfer station. So the rec department did get a notice saying they weren't allowed to attend yet. And, and drawing attention to Carol's write up, in the third paragraph down the second line, she inserts the term employees. And again, I will go back to uh, why I think that's important. Okay, no, no, second the motion. Okay. Uh, let's move in second and let's go through the discussion process. Tom. Thank you. Um, the, our selectmen are very fond of referring to anybody who works for the town or as, a, as an employee, regardless of whether they're an official or not, or whoever they are. Um, and they do that for a reason, because they think now if they're an employee, we can be their boss. Okay? I'm going to read you two definitions from Black's Law Dictionary, which is a thousand years of history and court interpretations and definitions of words as they are used legally, all right? And then you can think it through for yourself. But I think we were asking for municipal officials to come to see us. All the people get checks here are they consider employees, and that's fine. From a tax point of view, that's great. Okay? But that's a tax utilization definition. It is not a legal definition as such. Our municipal officials are, by statute, municipal officials. And those are the people we want to talk to. They're the higher ups, you're right. Okay? So I will read you the definition from the law of what an employee is, if I can find it here. And then I will read you the definition of what an official is. All right? Employee. And this is an 1822 definition, but this is the one the courts have been going by since 1822. A person who works in the service of another, the employer, under the express and implied contract of hire, under which the employer has the right to control the details of the work performed. Right? So, presumably the employer directs that employee every step of the way. Our road commissioners don't do that. They don't wait till the selectmen call them on the road. Our fire chief doesn't do that. 
He doesn't wait till the selectmen call him and get him, to get him on the road. Let me take you now to the definition of a official. Well, official is the term that we're looking for here. That's the one we want. Oh, excuse me while I uh, who's got really good eyesight? I'm looking at <laughs> Official, here we are. One who holds or is invested with a public office, a person elected or appointed to carry out some portion of a government's sovereign powers. Those are the people we elect or appoint to run the various branches of government. Those are the people we want. But the department heads is the same thing. Uh, departments heads, yes, effectively are officials. We're all officials. Everybody, everybody who signs the paper, okay, and pays the pledge is a municipal official by state statute. The selectmen are also municipal officers. The distinction between a municipal officer and a municipal uh, official is that the, that the selectmen, the municipal officers, have sole responsibility for custod as custodians of the town money. And uh, that, that's the only distinction. So they're officials and they're officers. So let me give it, let me, if I can go mind you cutting you off, Tom, <clears throat> a distinction. The town clerk, the treasurer, and the code enforcement do not take an oath of office. I hope the devil they do, they better. I, uh, the, 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 the board of selectmen, I'm asking, okay, they do, they have to. The board of selectmen, uh, is there a administrator doesn't, okay? Or does the town clerk does? Town clerk does. Is there a point? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But they have a statutory position. The secretary, the the, um, the uh, treasurer has a, has a statutory position. The town clerk has a statutory position. Fire chief has a statutory position. Code enforcement officer has a statutory position. All those jobs are required by state statute in order for the town to be incorporated as a municipality. Now that's not the sole criteria for being a municipal official because we take the oath and we have a <coughs> common law of duty to the town meeting. But the municipal officials work for the town meeting, they don't work for the slot. Okay? So we have in this case where we have a hired treasurer who is perceived as working for the selectmen and a clerk who is perceived as working for the uh, um, uh, selectmen. Uh, there's a problem there, there's a compliment, okay? But I don't want to get into that right now. Um, well, I'll need another example of that. Uh, at the transfer station, mm -hmm. Bobby Mann is an employee. He's not a, he's not a public official because he isn't appointed. I believe that's the case. Okay. <clears throat> I so don't want to find something to Beg your pardon? We would have to say municipal officials and staff or and employees. If we well, and, and we could, uh, uh, I, I don't really know about him. But I, I'm not sure the statutes surrounding running the transfers. Right. right. I'm pretty sure he's just. You know, he be, I don't remember the idea at that point. Appointed or elected doesn't make any difference. You're an official in a, in a statutory position. You're an official. <laughs> okay. So what's, what's happened over time is that the terms employee and official become conflated. And the application of the term employee is derived from what tax law says. Okay? Because according to tax law, everybody's employed also. We're asking, we're asking for municipal officials. And they have responsibility to the town meeting, and we are the body that are elected to represent the town meeting in the town. Okay, Tom. So are you okay with us, you know, changing it to say, you know, <clears throat> stating that no municipal official or town employee? Because Jennifer and Bobby, they're both town employees. I they're, think. They're, they're, in one role, they're town employees. In another role, they are municipal officials. Right. But if she were, come, if, let's say, John, for example, were coming to speak to us as a town administrator, she's a, she's not a municipal official. Right, <coughs> right, right. Um, as a town clerk, she is. Right. Okay. So, what I'm this distinction is important. It seems it seems nitpicky, but it's not really in the end. Okay, make that distinction. I'll give you another case where we have the same thing going on when we talk about capital improvements or capital 
maintenance or whatever, okay? Uh, there's an assumption out there that capital, and this, this is going on down in the school department, uh, is anything that you spend for more than, more than three years on. Okay, in other words, we're, they're, they're talking about taking the parking lot. They're calling that a capital improvement. Well, it's not by law. It is, in, tax, in terms of tax law, because the tax law is getting written so that you can write off these expenses in a very rapid order. But every couple of years, they change the length of time you have to write off the capital expense. That does not define capital improvement. Just because tax law says that, that is not the legal definition of a capital improvement. OK, Tom. All right. And the, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any? So what, what are we doing? I'm, I'm suggesting that in Carol's write-up, OK, wherever the term town employees are referred to, we substitute uh, municipal officials. Because that's what we want to do. I, I think that it should be right. visual or yeah. I don't know. Well, right. yeah. But I think we're asking them to come to us as, <clears throat> as municipal officials, so not simply as town employees. <clears throat> but if you put both on, then you're going to both cut them. Sure, no, fine. I don't have a problem with that. Right. I think we need to the transfer station began as a perfect example. If they're not appointed uh, their employees, and obviously if he was going to have a meeting like we were planning on having, he didn't want the transfer station coming through it also. When he did this talk, there was no transfer station. <laughs> That's what we call it. Well, well it, would be, it wouldn't be included in here anymore. It may well be, it may well be that he is a municipal official. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. But to cover all the bases. Right. Yeah. That, no, that's fine. I just, I just want to make sure that we identify them as municipal officials because that's what we need to cover. Everybody fine with that? Yeah, so you, what you're doing is you're just correcting this record. Right. Right. So I'm suggesting we correct that. Everybody in favor of the amendment? Raise your hand. Opposed? Six zero. Now. Can I ask you something? No. Can you, if you, if you make a motion, can everybody write it out so we know what it is? Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, instead of, like Tom made a motion, to write it out and then give it to Carol. Yeah. And then, every, it, it is a good idea. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, but, but take the, let's take the time <clears throat> to, yeah. to jot it down. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Moving forward. Yep. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll put that policy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the problem is, the problem is, Arnie, frankly, that lots of times we don't know what we have or what we're dealing with, okay? Get this stuff lots of times with us. Yeah. And we do have the opportunity to pick up and make those corrections when we come back. If we want to get on the record for two more minutes, we have the opportunity to pick up. Oh, no, I, I, uh, I, I would agree wholeheartedly you know, that uh, yeah. it is good to have a record. Yeah, yeah, I would just, yeah, it would be easier. Yeah, yeah. So just let me know, know just for everybody knows who I was. I did. Yeah. So, I am I. Any more discussion on that before we vote on that? We would have voted on the amendment, now we're going to vote on the amendments. So I'll, I'll make a motion when we adopt the amendments as number two for the 26th meeting of the 27th. Okay, we have a second. Second. Yeah, we did that one. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? <coughs> Six zero. Uh,
Well, that, that's fine, but I still have to buy five years. I still, I, I still have to uh, give my husband a lot of time, and I know he's had it, Virginia. Uh, but looking at it, when we're talking about the policies and stuff, I thought we might want to incorporate that. Uh, there's a mission statement, a file of our policies, or so whatever you want to do, it's up to you guys. Uh, I just thought it was a good conversation to have. And we can deal with that, and if you guys want to deal with that, I'll go right to uh, maybe what Virginia has come up with, or anybody else has come up with, or any, what do you want to do? I, I, I call 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 you, yeah, and then comment already distributed his thoughts on um, the policies. Permit policies and procedures and, and uh, 1214-2019 uh, grant. This was notes that I did, and they are not very particular format to so the talking points, but um, since I wasn't using the computer too, too well for the last month or so, we did it in print. Well, we're glad we can see eye to eye tonight. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, do you have a copy of the, I didn't bring it tonight. Do you have a copy of yours? Yep. Um, well, I mean, I'm Kyle. I'm, I mean, I'm Kyle. Hey, how are you doing, Anna? <laughs> My name's Jens. <laughs> I want to I wanna go back to the July minutes that we adopted in there. The minutes read that. Hold well, on, guys. Hold well, on. I did it. Here you go. That's what I want to have. Go ahead, Arnie. All right. The minutes read that we, uh, that we were going to adopt um, uh, Robert's rules of law, right? I should have I had them here. But, uh, that was back in July. Yeah. And I would just like to put uh, 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 amend those to say committee meetings will follow Robert's rules of law in brief because I want to have a disclaimer in there uh, also to the best of our ability because Robert's rules is about 700 pages long and the Robert's Rules in Brief is about 100 and there's only like 40 or 50 pages of descriptions in there and I would just like to, so we're not bound because it says we were adopting Robert's Rules of Order to run the meetings. Well, I don't think we have a world, but 
you get some smart out who wants to come along and I want to amend it, I want to amend it, amend it, I want to amend it, amend it, and amend it, and all. You know, you just kind of got that. Right. Well, I, think, I think if we adopt the, 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 the whole policy that you have, as I've written down, um, that we, we cover a company that we... Well, I'm just saying Robert's rules in brief, that's it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Robert's rules in brief covers the demeanor and the thing and everything else, whatever, how you control it, you know, how motion should be made, you know. The respect that everybody has, they should go to the chair, not talk without being recognized by the chair, you know, back and forth. How about you call them by the wrong name, honey, and that, <laughs> no, they won't answer you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looked at me, so I knew. Mean, oh, yes. um, so, with that being said, I would still like Virginia to, if she would like to, kind of, uh, I just listed it as the other policy. It's just this is the first item I just put a note down as well. So some of these are just, these are not to be taken quite so literally. No. Yeah. Anyway. Right, right. And you know what I'm going to It was just to prompt some discussion. Mm -hmm. But um, as Ani suggests, if it's vague enough, my turn, vague enough, then nobody can pin you down. So you would change that to what? Robert's Rules of Order? I, I would think just to say in brief. If, in brief. And, I, and I'm totally in agreement with the way that Tom phrased it as well. I just, um, I never want to see, since we're not in court, rules that just hamstring the whole right. production. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. you know? yeah. Yeah, he is a 
be on I can send everybody, I can send everybody a copy that we can. Maybe we don't want to, maybe we want to spend a little bit of time working with what Virginia has and uh, and meld these two together or whatever. Yes. Uh, in which case I can go home and show everybody a copy. Has everybody went to Virginia? I just want to make a video. I the, the question I have, Virginia, is unofficial gatherings. Uh, some would argue that every time we get together, it's official right out there that there's no it says well right here it says there's a common misconception that works workshops which are usually for discussion only are somewhat different from official business meetings in fact the law draws no distinction whether a board is engaged in decision making or discussion only it's a transaction transacting public business and its meetings must be publicly noticed and open to the public Workshops are public proceedings on the FOAA. Okay. And the state law says that if we get together for anything as a as a, a board, yeah. it's a public proceeding. It has to be a record. And it has to be a notice put out that you're having a meeting, and it has to be a record of the meeting. That is in 40. Uh, Title One, Chapter 13, 402, 404, and 406. 406 is the notice. Uh, uh, but that's the, that's the state law. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's why we're having this discussion. So, yeah. okay. my understanding is that they are frequently using the board of as an example. They have their little stall sessions go over what's going on with you and Greece, put three of them on board of going down the same road. Um, those aren't present. So what took me down this path is I'm thinking there's a there are times when we don't have any serious conversations at one of the comments and I'm talking about in the past three years some of them were rather brief sessions and they weren't the structure, um, it was kind of freewheeling, and, and that's fine. But if that's the case, I see no reason why I believe it's the board of selectmen requires that all of our meetings are filmed. Not all of theirs are, as far as I know. No, and, and, and the question was asked. Because the slot yeah. made a policy that all public mm -hmm. meetings uh, must be filmed. Except this. Except, except, like tonight, for example, uh, I came up, uh, they had scheduled a workshop uh, to talk about uh, next year's budget with all the different departments. Uh, and 
they said it was going to be a workshop, and and they met in the um, back room, like you said, Virginia. And, you know, they have these meetings, and they're discussing um, what increases should be here or be there, or we need to have this one come in, uh, whatever. The whole financial aspect of it. Uh, and a public meeting, according to the law, like Nani just read to us, uh, it is open to the public. I mean, I went to it mainly because I'm the liaison to the town hall, so I thought I should. Uh, but you're right that it's not a it, it's not a uh, personnel issue. It's not a uh, it's public information. In the state of Maine in general, even in other communities you know of, this term workshop, is that what they That's irrelevant. Is that a common term? Well, there can be workshops with, like the, the state road, road guy came down here and talked about... Uh, oh, the asphalt. Yeah, the asphalt. Yeah. That was, that was a, it's an educational workshop and it's informational. You're not discussing, it's for educational purposes. You go to a workshop to learn about, you know, diabetes workshop, uh, you know, where it's educational, not discussing public business. Here, this is I have the I have the statute right here. This is Title One, Chapter Thirteen, Four Hundred Two. The definitions. That's it. This Four Hundred Two. Public proceedings. The term public proceeding, as used in this subject, means the transactions of any functions affecting any or all citizens of the state by any of the following, any board, commissioner, agency, authority of any county, municipality, school district, or any regional or other political or administrative subdivision. Okay, so on, on my notes here, so that whole section will come out. Um, do we need to say that our meetings will be conducted in compliance with well, you just you don't have to do it. You just have to do them. Just follow the, the, the thing, the law. That's all you have to say. You okay. don't follow it. You have to follow it unless you find a way around it. So, so what what Ani's saying? If you're doing a workshop that has no effect on the town, for example, as a town committee, uh, that's one thing. If you talking about, um, say, I was, I was working for the town and I put in this department that I wanted a 10% raise. Uh, when they negotiate that or discuss it or whatever, uh, that's a public proceeding and, and it should be televised. Tom? Uh, just a couple notes. First of all, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned the fact that you selected have a policy or selected an established policy for this they can establish policies for their own committee and not this committee. Well, that's irrelevant. But Arnie has the law right. Uh, but we could have scenarios where, for instance, we invite somebody to come in and teach us or share information with us, okay, which we're not conducting business, but we're conducting an educational event for ourselves. Okay, That would be a legitimate reason to not have I want to televise anyway. Yeah, I, I would. I would. That would be a set of circumstances where where you could you could get around. Well, if it's it, well, I would say if you're you're doing the thing to benefit to make a decision for the town, then that's a part of the deliberation. Mm -hmm. So if you had somebody to come in here that was going to explain, um, um, say, the fire department when they had the the furnace. I mean, you, you know, you could come in and that would be part of the information that would be we're teaching us about making a decision. So I don't know. I think I, I, I'm with you because I'm in favor. I don't have a problem with this camera over here. And I ignore it most of the time. Yeah. Okay, but uh, but I, I perceive situations, and, and, and that is debate if we weren't involved in case the business was supporting somebody else. Carol. Um, the policy isn't over this committee, so to speak. No, the policy is that that's the 
from every part of DC with the exception of Toy Story, which, you know, I don't agree with. But, you know, the policy isn't, we're clients who must be filmed. The policy is, they you must, must film must any film. public proceeding. So I don't want to, you know, it, 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 it's, two different, but it's two different things. But it's two different things, you know. Right. You're right, Carol, and 100% right, and I believe I did this week. Yes. Well, the policy is that directed in their policies to the TV station that you have to film. Is that fine? And I'm sensitive when it comes to the TV stations. And, but I do know <laughs> the Slutman have said uh, that their workshops uh, were uh, exempt. Yeah. And they started doing their workshops out here uh, a while ago, but they still have them out there. So I that that request. Uh, that's irrelevant, I guess. Yeah, if anybody wants to take a look at this, workshops are public procedures <coughs> under FOAA, Maine Municipal. Says right here. So it had, regardless of how a board meeting may be characterized, workshop, business meeting, etc., if it involves the transaction of any board function, including discussions only, it constitutes a public proceeding. Hmm? You have to bring a portable copy. I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, that's, a, that's an opinion, though, by by MMA, that is not statute, statutory language there. Uh, so it's subject to interpretation. Even statutory language is subject to interpretation. Well, but MMA. But FOA is very clear. clear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the first part of the, the, uh, the law says that uh, they want everything pretty much government open. I think, I think it's a good idea. I don't have a problem with it at all. I love it, but. Uh, but uh, <laughs> So what we'll do, uh, without objection, uh, we'll look at this stuff and, and kind of put them together. And, yeah. and, and hopefully come to a consensus the next time we meet. And yeah, whatever. Uh, but this is a real good start. Yeah. I know. I, uh, yeah, well, we can. Like I say, all meetings should be just recorded. There shouldn't yep. be anything. We should so we take out anything un unofficial. Yep. The other thing that uh, uh, Virginia touched on, which I had uh, down here, that we define uh, the duties of uh, um, the uh, yeah, the alternate. <laughs> the thing, you know what the alternate can do. I mean, the alternate, unless it's I have it written down as a, as a motion here to what I want. I would like to say uh, alternates will take part in all deliberations. They cannot vote, make motions, or second motions unless acting on behalf of an absent mem member by a ruling of the chair. I agree with that. Huh? <coughs> <coughs> that's all secret. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's yeah. The and that's the that's the, the one I had for the, the minutes. Okay. That's yours. Yeah, we have to copy. Oh, thank you. He's so good. He is. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel kind of. I've been uh, weird. You, you want a motion? You always had to write the motion. It wasn't it wasn't passed it off to the secretary. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so Arnie's Arnie's uh, limit when he believes it. So we'll all take this home and, and, and put together our various thoughts and let's compose them in terms of uh, amendments to something and then we can work on amendment by amendment. Yeah, a policy, yeah, to write them out and try and get them into uh, a uh, format that we can actually discuss and strike out and add on. And I mean, these wouldn't be amendments because this is never been adopted. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, this we, we is, put this together. Is no, just like we did with yours tonight. We, we went through this one, this the official meeting thing here. And yeah. then I just add a little bit more to the, to yeah. the uh, your suggestions on the, the uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. We have it down like this here, and we just go through each one. Everybody put their two cents in. I have one I'd like to make. Everybody picked up anyway. Okay. You're going to write it down? Uh, uh, yes, I can, I can write it down. I actually have it already written down. Under policies and procedures in uh, Ms. Shea's uh, thing, uh, third paragraph down, 
uh, I add to that, or as otherwise authorized by Warren Finance Committee vote. Okay? And the reason for that is sometimes, uh, well, never mind. I'll just suggest that. Uh, but there are times when we'd like to appoint somebody to go to the town meeting and represent the committee other than the chairman if he's not available for one reason or another. I've been in that position, been appointed by the committee before to represent the, uh, uh, the committee at a, at a town meeting. Uh, so, and so, so, and so, okay. can you read that again so I can jot it down on the bottom of this thing? Yes. Or as otherwise authorized by the Warrant Finance Committee by vote. So instead of the chairman authorizing it, you uh, say No, that's just another way in which somebody could act for the committee you know, as a sole person. I guess it's kind of like, and I didn't, I'm not glad they let us do it because the Slevin's meeting when I asked if Carol could right. uh, exactly. represent right. and be voted on that. Yeah. And that's why I guess really yeah. what the, that's a perfect right. example of it. And it's coming from my experience having been a president. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> had to go <laughs> and fight with people <laughs> in what I didn't believe in, but I was representing the committee, so I couldn't change what he spoke. <laughs> I only have a passing thought when we, just, when, um, when we talk about numbers of days, I think we should specify whether we're talking calendar or business. Right. I saw that five business days. Yeah. yeah that's, that's good. Because I think the state. Law was seven, seven days. I believe so. A week, and that would give us. What kind of days? They don't say. It. No, it's just seven. Days. It just says seven, just seven calendar calendar days. Okay, so that's the calendar days. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Jim, can I? Yes. Uh, the other thing that I, I had read before at some time that um, if the if we get something that that's late and we don't vote on it, does the the uh, state law say that they, the warrant finance have to have a vote on every warrant article last up and down? Last time that I looked, and is when if a, a municipality has a warrant finance committee, state law is it has to be printed on the warrant, what their recommendations are, to present it to the town. Uh, it didn't used to be that way, but I know the last I knew that's how it is now. I haven't checked the Can we abstain? Well, you can abstain, whatever, like, whatever the vote is. You know, they have to, the Warren Finance Committee has to take action and it has to be uh, written on the warrant what, what their action was. But can you abstain? Uh, if you have. Uh, there are only specific items. Right. Right, it has yeah, to be it's a personal conflict. They have certain reasons to be allowed to stay. Oh. Yeah, because I got to remember off the top of my head what the apple who went to the wrong plan for. Uh, you, have to, you have to say what your reason is. It has to be part of the minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't want to see a situation where it would be somebody that would be at that time where we didn't get a number of days with this says. No, no, we we'll, 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 No, I, I agree. I, mean, I, I I guess this goes back to people willing to work with people. Right? You know, I mean, the best they can to their best ability. I, I I was hoping with a school, for example, um, and I haven't talked to John to see what came up, but he was originally going to try to. Uh, get the budget all done by the 5th, which would have given us, you know, a bigger leeway uh, to where they slept something that's at the town meeting. Uh, but something has come on, and it looks like now they're not going to be able to get it done to the 12th. But that will still give us the uh, warrant determination by the school committee that Friday. And so we'll, that's the best we can do. And we, go ahead. I said out that clarified the timeline, school timeline that John had sent me. I want to make sure everybody saw it. I'll have it off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. 
but it really clarified the dates and the time frame. And they were allowing us, I mean, we will have the week to review it before we vote. You, you might not have a paper copy, but everybody's going to have it on their email. And if you want a paper copy, want a paper copy you have to we'll work it out. So everybody will have the information. And, and as you know, with the school committee, everything's pretty well laid out. And any questions you have between now and then, even if you can't uh, come to the meeting, uh, feel free to let me know or send an email to John Ross. If any concerns you might have or questions, and so that hopefully you can give the answers uh, or have them ready for you get the answers. You told me what. No, no, no. Whether we agree with them or not is irrelevant. Whether we agree with them or not, the answers, but at least we'll have them from that point of view. Is there anything else? Under other? Yeah. I am going to uh, make a motion and request that the chairman uh, speak with the board of selectmen to reconsider their email of uh, 126 2020 and uh, clarify the fact that we are free to request the presence, they will have to come, request the presence of municipal officials at our discretion, and it does not require permission from the board. Short of that, we can go to MMA, go that route, but let's start by just making a request they reconsider that, because we've got no response from them to date. Is that correct? They sent out this. Sent out what? This email. The answer they got back from Rebecca McMahon, staff attorney. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, since they, they they have made this decision, they issued this email telling us, telling after having told our municipal officials that they, they weren't come to our meeting. Yeah. After they got this, so they're obviously not clear on, on what they're doing. And I'm suggesting this is this is the one where they where they tell us you can't have these people come to the meeting. Okay? Can you repeat yeah. that sentence, please? Um, and the other, you want the chair to ask the board of selectmen to reconsider their 126.20 email to allow Warren Finance to meet with municipal officials at the discretion of Warren Finance. Okay, thank you. Without interference from board of selectmen. You want, you want to be strong with the same no, I shouldn't. With, with, uh, they, they don't have any business being involved. I, I, I think that um, we brought our opinion to Board of Selectmen a couple of times, and they obviously don't agree with us. And I don't think that, that I consider this more like poking the bear, like it's not going to accomplish anything. If we want to take it any further, I think that. Um, they, we, we aren't, I mean, requesting anything of them is a waste of time when it comes to this. They, they feel the way they feel, and we have to respect that. And either, if we're going to pursue it further, it's not by making any request of them. I, 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 we've already done that. It didn't work. And I don't think that, I know they're not going to change their mind. So, whatever the next step will be, whether you want to start a petition, whether you want to get a, a lawyer, or whatever, I, I think that, that um, this has been exhausting. I, I don't see anything good that can come of this. Okay. That's my opinion. Well, my motion wasn't seconded anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> it may die right there. But the chair hasn't asked for a second either. So uh, I should have asked for that before we had any discussion. <laughs> uh, is, is, is there a second to Tom's motion? No, we have, yeah, I'll second it just for further discussion. Okay, go ahead. Well, this, this falls back onto the other one. Now, we got a letter mm -hmm. saying that the full board met and made a decision. That was in that, that email. And I questioned at the time when they met, and I stated this, this law. Now, they made 
had a meeting and met and made that decision, where was the meeting? They alluded to in the answer, you look at minute 40 at the Slutman's meeting, and that's when the, they voted, and what they voted was to not let um, the town hall staff attend this meeting. David and Ed. Did you look at that? No, I didn't. Okay, well, I didn't. Did not. And I don't reach that. I don't, I don't reach that. I don't come to that conclusion. But that has nothing to do with the rest of the town. No. Departments. Regardless. No. But I'm just saying that it's mentioned, but it's, there was no discussion of a vote taken to do that. But how do you, how do you move past this? I don't, I don't know. Is what I'm saying. Well, it, I, I, there are there are any number of options, but, but, but this one that I was proposing was probably the checklist and could be done quietly without raising a lot of emotion. And that's what I was going to do. If you don't think that's worth, the next step is to is to request and test our right to access and make it. You know, it's my my question is: Do they ever say? Is this in the benefit of the people of the town? Do you think most of the people care about whether those people came to our meeting or not? I think most of the general public did care yeah, because I think the general I mean, public. Would I just like don't see what the aversion would be. Why would why would why would you not? I don't know. I, I can tell you why. It's just yeah. that we say recently have a policy to have everything built. Okay, it's this. Tucker, you didn't pin on any of this stuff. <laughs> I, I think we're still hung up on the intent of our meeting, how it was perceived by the Board of Selectmen, as far as, like Virginia and I had agreed on that, I believe that uh, it, it was taken as the meeting was for the purpose of the Capital Improvement Committee, which we said we weren't part of, in back and forth. I really wonder if we just reword uh, our intent for the meeting as far as why we want to meet with them. If it's not capital improvement related, if we'll have a completely different answer. Well, that's what that is. Isn't that what Carol kind of did with her when she did the <clears throat> response to, to the Slutman? And he said, What are you doing? She wrote that thing out and read it. Right. I thought that clarified a pretty good time. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know how they, they, how they perceive it. it. Right. I mean, right. It's, it's one thing to hear it, but be able to process it while you're up there before and have it. Right. It, you know, the you know, meeting might be in one ear or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. need an answer to that, but it's. So you think if we request a meeting for, you know, financial forecasting? Well, well, let's, let's, let's hammer out exactly the purpose of why we want to be on the statement as far as why we want to be these people. Right? I I kind of <laughs> Well let's just David, you got something you want to say about it? I'm green at this. I'm out of the ground everybody can uh, all the procedures and procedures what I've always been in because I used to be a road breaker. And I come to the board of finance and we talk with them. That was it. I left. That was that. I didn't have 12 different departments coming in. And, you know, I mean, I can't imagine doing that. And I don't know where this, uh, you know, capital improvement. I thought that was out the board with nothing to do with. And I don't know if you guys could tell me. <laughs> We get warrants passed down to us, and then we work with them. I mean, like the, like that bridge thing the other day. I don't know what you people had, what I didn't do. I didn't go and look at the bids. I didn't look at the contracts, and then we voted no. You know, I'm missing a lot. Yeah. No, we voted yes. Yeah, I know that. And then, no, later on, I mean, it just didn't, just didn't make sense. No, I mean, it was approved when we voted. You know, I know. It's it's it, but I mean, it was you know, I, I, I know. <coughs> well, we have the same what, information. What is, what is that position? I mean, we want a description on how much power we've got 
I, I've got a problem with that. I didn't think they were following the stat rule, but uh, I'm just here. I want to see what the finances are, what we're going to vote on, and, and where it's coming from instead of. That was the whole purpose of meeting with everybody here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Can you clarify it for me then? <laughs> no, I mean, that was the whole purpose of meeting with Bobby or meeting with Ricky Smith or, or Will or Joe. Uh, the school, uh, anybody. I mean, that's the whole purpose. It was all to do with what they thought they needed or wanted. Like you said, you used to do it. Did we have it passed down to us from somebody, or we just mostly conjured them up? Is that our job? No, we're not conjuring them up. The, these people... I know where they are. You know? I mean, they're the professionals. Yeah. You know, the, the select one, when, I, I use Ricky Smith, for example. Ricky Smith is the fire chief. He should be able to say, not just to us, to the townspeople, as the fire chief, this is what I see that I need. Okay? He shouldn't go to the selectman and the selectman say, this is what you need. Because the selectman don't know what the fire chief needs. He's the professional. It's the same thing with the roads. You know what I mean? If you're a road commissioner, as a selectman, it isn't up to me to say you don't need the money to change this power out here because I don't know nothing about it. But you're the guy that's out there saying, I need to do this. And we, you need to listen to the road commissioner or the fire chief or whatever. And this is why when we meet with these people, we get explanations so that we're just not blankly saying no. You can we can have over two percent an increase in any budget this year, and that's the end of it. You know what I'm saying? I don't see that as our role. I, I see it as our role to listen to what the professionals are saying. Well, you know, I know we've talked before anyway. If somebody wants some money for something, they're going to be the salesman. You know? I agree. You know, and that's, I mean, that's, I thought that's what we were there for. The people are going to come in and tell us what they need. And we ought to tell you, you know. That's what we wanted to do. And the Slutman said no. That's on, on the capital improvement. I know that. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, just sitting in Do we get warrant passed down to us from them? Mm -hmm. From the Slutman? Yes. Yeah. Right. Is that what we work on? Or do we work on going up and getting people in? It? You know, that's what I'm trying to get. I, I like to sit out here and see some papers, some numbers, and do something. You know? I voted on one thing right now that I think really pertains to the point the finance, you know, the finances, but uh, the current ordinance says we work off of the articles that come down from the war is looking to us. Right. We don't go up beating the bushes looking at the war. Right. But that's where you Well that's what I'm, I'm yeah. hoping, you know. Yes. Yeah. We're trying to make these other policies and whatnot. I mean, I just want to get on with it. What what has been the procedure in the past for getting people in here to talk to us? Didn't happen. Well, didn't, didn't you just say, David, that, that you had come in before when you were a road commissioner? You said you had come in here before. Well, what? Well, I had said this once before and I was mistaken. Bill Lox was the one I went with. He was on the law finance. We visited at his house, me and the other road commissioner, and we went over what we know. We, we had plans ahead. We go to our meetings every two United, whatever it was back then. And this is what we want to do, this is what we want to do. And every week we did that. And you, you, when you go out there and you find this thing, by plowing, plowing your road in the wintertime, the first thing you do, you find out your bad spots. I mean, and then I just had to bring it up to him. And then he brought it up before the committee. It was easy. No problem. But I, I, I don't know. Just missing something. Carol. One of the things that happened last year in Tucker was um, we got the budget, you know, we got the warrant. And then they, we came in here on a Saturday, and every department had, what, 15 minutes to present right. and explain, and then next to the So you really, it was like boom, 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 boom. And you're trying to understand where they're coming from, what they want, and why they want it. But they're, they're you know, pigeonholed this 15 minute block of time to explain it to us. And it was tough. It really was. And, and it wasn't just last year. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was one of them. Yeah. So then that makes it really hard. So by doing this, you, you, you're, you're getting an education, you're informed on where they're coming from, what they want, and then when you get that warrant, you already have that background knowledge, so then you're, you can make a more informed decision. Right. So, are we able to, 
rather than try and set it all into one or two meetings and each one brings it individually and like whoever can come in and go with one or two per meeting or however. We we can talk about what happens at this Saturday meeting, for example, with the selectmen call. Like Carol said, you have 15 minutes. And if you have a question that you want an answer to, when your time's up, your time's up. You don't move on to the next one. They get out of three hours, or two hours, or three hours, whatever it is, and you're tied to that, and you don't get any information. Yes, you get it later. Yeah. Tom. I'm going to do a little bit of going back a little bit further and answer your question. I think. In the 1990s, before the before the middle of the 1990s, all the articles in the market were written as open articles. Okay, the selectmen had a format that open by an open article that did not include the sub. The articles were written to see what the town will appropriate to see what's happening. That was the warrant, and then the. The various officers met with the Warrant and Finance Committee without the select committee even present most of the time. Some of the time they were, some of them weren't. And the Warrant and Finance Committee and that particular municipal official settled on a figure that went into the Warrant as a recommendation of the Warrant and Finance Committee. And that's before about 1992. In 1992, we had a group of selectmen, and I won't give you names, okay, but we had a group of selectmen who decided they were going to control the budget. They wanted to tighten the budget. So they started presenting closed articles. They started submitting, including the number in the article. Now you know, as well as everybody else knows, that you can't increase the number on the floor of the town meeting, you can only decrease it. Their notion was that they were going to try and reduce taxes. From that perspective, then we moved on in time, and uh, articles appeared that way, but it was still a number that the the Warrant and Finance Committee met with the various various municipal officials and discussed it and said, you know, is this going to work for you? Is this going to work for you? And it was amended if it was necessary. In about 210, uh, the selectmen decided that we weren't even going to see the warrant until they had decided what those numbers were. And that's when we initiated this business of having this Compressed, well, maybe it wasn't too tight, maybe it was a little bit later. Mm -hmm. That's probably okay, too tight. Then they started compressing these meetings, okay? So we had no time to do our job. And in fact, going back two years, we got the school budget warrant, $5 million budget. We had 27 hours of that warrant in front of us before we had to vote on it according to the select. Okay? We can't do our job in that. Frame in that time frame. We are, according to our um, ordinance, supposed to look at, investigate, and what's the terminology? I don't have it on the tip of my tongue right now. We're supposed to be a part of this process of developing what this number is. And we're supposed to make then recommendations to the town meeting as representatives of the town meeting mm -hmm. as to what that number should be. But two things have happened. The number is developed over there, and as our selectmen have described to us before we see it, they're going to have that number. And then we have, if we're lucky, maybe we'll have a week to consider that warrant. And we're supposed to do all our investigating for that entire warrant in that period of time. That's the background. That's the history. Right. So the right thing to do is go back to an open warrant and have the warrant finance committee do its job. That's my feeling. That's what I would like to see. That's what we're hired to do. But where does it say that we, this body is investigating? It says that in the warrant. It says that in the, in the ordinance. It tells us what our responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. You have any ordinance right there? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the term is investigate, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing research. research. Mm -hmm. doing research mm -hmm. right. Something like that. Right. I mean, you, you have to be able to research this information to make a legitimate recommendation on it. I had to vote. I'll just, <laughs> here's another example. When we bought the ambulance, okay? Big argument for four-wheel drive was, oh, we don't want the ambulance to get stuck. There wasn't even enough time to ask the question of the fire department, do we ever have a history of an ambulance getting stuck anywhere? 
That question never even had time starts. We got the warrant and it moved. And this is not the way to do business. It's not the way to generate the best and most economic solution to any problem. One more comment I will make. Oh, no, I'm not here. <laughs> but what you're talking about, what you're David, I'll go back to what you were saying. <clears throat> you said that um, the two, the two road commissioners would meet with the chairman of the Warren Finance Committee and, and you guys would sign and you guys would say what you needed and what you wanted, right? <clears throat> but Slutman, since 2010, has been telling the Warren Finance Committee what they want, not what the road commissioner wants. And that, and that was the whole purpose of of, of having this meeting for me was to see what the the road commissioner wanted, what the fire chief wanted, not what the selectmen wanted. Because the selectmen don't know what you know about doing those roads, for example. They don't know. Do we know what their budget is? What the money they have to spend? The, the, do they have anything to go by? The road, the selectmen yeah, I mean, right now? I'm just making it, you know, the road commissioner come in and they're going to pull it out of the hat. I want five hundred thousand dollars a piece because the roads are so far neglected for the last time that they haven't had nothing but popped off. Right. But, well, we're, we're, but we're, we're not going to hear that discussion. We're not going to hear that? No, because the Slevin already making the decision. Now why? Why would they say no? Because the, the money ain't there? Or is that their decision? How do they, you know, where do they form the budget to start with? Off last year's budget. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got to increase it. So, oh, 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 I know. But anyway, what I'm saying is that it, maybe it should be increased a lot for the, the, the condition the roads are in. Let's right. face it. What a, I mean, yeah, just for the example. But if the road commission says, I want to add $100,000 to pay them this year so I can start to try to catch up, and the selectmen say, no, we're only going to put 50, we're not going to see that 100 request as a finance committee, like you were talking about. Because the selectmen are already saying, no. So when the, we get it from the selectmen, that 50,000 will be gone. Because they won't give us what the, these departments request. Do you, you, you understand what I mean? Oh, I don't know, I know where you're coming from. I just, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, a line that they got to follow, too, right? Am I wrong? You would think. I don't know if you were selectmen one time, and I'm not even going to name the other one. But they were stopped. Uh, I mean, why? Oh, we want to keep the budget down. Uh, that was cool words. There was, there was something that came up that year. It was well, you know, it'd be a nice looking slip and we don't want taxes to go up, I don't know. That had nothing to do with it. That had nothing to do with it. There was something big that year that we had to address. I don't remember what it was. Right. Now that's what I'm good at. And, and, it, and we've done it in the past. I remember one year, I think Tom was a slip <coughs> It was a big problem on, I don't know if it was, you're in the town or Robert's in the town, and it was going to be a, a process, quite a bit more money. And what they did was mm -hmm. that road commissioner on this end of town says, Well, we won't do this and no one on this end of town this year because we have all this over here we got to do. And, 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 and it was the same scenario, and I've taken a bad hit for this, cutting the pavement out of that thing for, I don't know, ever since I, I was part of it. 2010, and it's still being brought up in conversations. And the truth of the matter is, it wasn't just me. It was two other selectmen. And then the Warren Finance Committee went along with it, and the townspeople went along with it. So the town cut it out. Dennis Long really didn't have that much power. Yeah, go ahead. In the Foreign Finance Ordinance, it says this committee shall review all proposed articles and shall obtain actual data to determine their effect on the town. There is another item in C. It says after due consideration in a study of the proposed warrant article, the committee shall make a recommendation as to whether the proposed warrant article should be approved based on the committee's consideration and it goes on. Why don't we take this? knock it up, send a copy to Ed Walsh and say, we can't do our jobs the way this ordinance is written. And then we would like to schedule a meeting to see how it is we're going to be able to accomplish what the 
most likely have set up for us to do. We would like to be able to do we it. We can do the research. We have to we pray, have, but you have to have there. The people come here to we won't, have, we won't have the time because it's condensed into these short. Oh, no, I appreciate that. So there isn't, they don't allow time for us to do what they say we're responsible to do. And they're not allowed to do the research. And then I can get the time to do it. So you got a timeline on when we will get a budget from them? Yes. Yeah. From the, I, I did. I, I think I got it here somewhere. I can't remember what it is. You, David? No. You have that? No. I forget what it is. I think I handed it out around here a while ago. Fine. Budget timeline. Here it is. Final recommendations due Friday May 8th. We'll read that. Yeah. Uh, initial requests are due by Friday, January 31st. Notice of potential ordinance articles to the town administrator by Friday, February 7th. <laughs> Final ordinance articles due by Friday, March 6th. Joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Warren Finance Saturday, March 28th. Yeah. Warren Finance final recommendations due Friday, May 8th. Selectmen signed the warrant on Wednesday, May 20th. The warrant is posted on Friday, May 22nd. The election is Tuesday, June 9th. Town meeting is Saturday, June 13th. So, if so do we get it after the final the final things or do we get it oh, geez, it's almost it's past the, it's past February eighth now. So we have to get it March sixth. Well the second says that we won't get it until yeah. they can go through it. So we're gonna get it March. Sometime that's before the twenty eighth. Uh, Sometime around the twenty eighth. last year we got it right before that meeting. Actually it was was it the day of the meeting we got our binders? Yes. So it was at that meeting. So March 28th is when we would get our budget. You know, the warrant. Not budget. The warrant. Right. Draft. And, and then the March 28th, and we have the month of April, basically, to review it. Because we are expected to make our recommendations five weeks, with five weeks. Um, May 8th. Friday, May 8th. Our recommendations are due. May 8th? Yeah. This budget timeline uh, came out from um, the treasurer. It's on September 30th. If you deal with back in the mm -hmm. web, web mail. So I guess that's, David, to answer your question, and I, I agree with what you're saying. But we're trying to get to what you're talking about. This is this is what we're trying to do. It, it is get the way of what you're talking about. <coughs> and every committee it should have policies and how they operate. You know what I mean? I mean, otherwise you're going in all different directions. And and if you have policies and procedures the way you operate, and I understand that the policies we come up with. And all the years I've been on Warren Finance, off and on, which has been a lot of different times. The Warren Finance has never had any policy the way they're operating that I ever know of. And even though, if, say, like next year, uh, it's a new committee, but at least they have something to look back on to try to have a little order in what they're doing. And if they want to change something, they can change something, obviously, but you won't be wasting everybody's time trying to come up with something now. Like, like, I'm not saying it's a waste of time, but the reason why we're doing this is because we really want to get it done before we see the budgets, so that we're not having this discussion when we'll be talking about budgets instead of how, we, how we're supposed to operate. You know? And that, that's, that's my rationale for why we're doing what we're doing. And I appreciate the, what you're saying about the finances. It's a lot more interesting. <laughs> but I still want, as a member, I mean, I want your input and how we proceed. Just like I said, I want everybody's input. 
you know. So I think, uh, speaking of uh, uh, not having a common understanding, we used to have norms in town. Everybody knew, everybody understood how it worked. So there wasn't any need to write it down. Either we've lost that institutional knowledge. That's what we have to create in order to move this forward in an orderly fashion. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, everybody said, this is the process we've used for years. We're going to do the same thing and the same people participate in it. But that institutional knowledge doesn't exist anymore. And that's why this is so important to do, to, to recreate it and document it. The other thing I want to say is, we, we have a town meeting for government. The people are supposed to be making decisions. They need information to do that. Okay? When we have a warrant that we're pushing through here, we have no clue what we're doing, and we're voting on it, we're not in a position to offer the municipality any options. Okay? It's just boom, 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 boom. We need time to find out what the options are and figure out what the best course of action is and leave the final decisions to the people as opposed to having them presented to us. Here's the final document. Either up or down, we don't care. And that's where we are right now. Thank you, Mr. Gore. <laughs> Virginia, <laughs> sir. No, my understanding was, no, my perception, that we have liaisons appointed to all these other committees.
in that spot they only had fifty dollars for the end of the program award ceremony. Knowing that in previous years we've had about fifty participants in soccer, we didn't expect almost a hundred. Yeah, you know, with the program double. Yeah. You know what I mean? So double the money for cookout. And so we fundraised the money so that we didn't have to take it from our budget. But we weren't allowed to spend that well. But they wouldn't let them spend over the fifty dollars without permission from the slot man, and that doesn't make any sense. And that's just an example. I'll give you that's just that right. That's just one example. It's not a tactic. I'll give you another example. One more. One more. Just one more. Tom, be quick. Then I'll make a motion. Dollar. Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. But a couple of years ago, yes, the the, uh, the planning board. You weren't on the planning board at that point, Dennis. I don't believe. But uh, the planning board needed to put in a notice for some event. And because the selectmen did not like the things that the planning board was considering, the selectmen refused to invite to put the advertising in the newspaper. With that being said, both to adjourn. Well, we have to set a date for our next both meeting. Both. If we want to do it, we want to wait and take a month off, but what do you guys want to do? <coughs> well, I, I would. My thing would be spread it out for a little bit to put these yep. things together, yep. the uh, proposed, and you can, uh, you know, we could email them out what our, our things were, and then uh, and maybe hash them out so we don't have to have such a long meeting, you know. Yep. Uh, send them out and what we'll come up with. I mean, I would just like to get it done before we start and we vote on the school budget, that's all. That way there, all the stuff's behind us, and from there on, we'll just be on the list. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I would, I would like to say, I would just like to have all our ducks in a row, like, when we come to the next meeting, so we don't just, right, talk about it. Beat it over and over and over. February 24th, two weeks from tonight. Yeah. 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 That work. Hopefully, we can put this to bed on the 24th. And well, that's not hopefully. We're gonna put. This we're gonna put it to bed on the 24th. No matter what it's gonna be, it's gonna be. And <laughs> unless it's something that I, I would say, let's try and make sure we get it done. I hate this. And to keep David happy. Over, over, overthinking it. Hopefully, the next meeting we'll be talking about money. Yeah. <laughs> that work, David. Yeah. Can I request an item to be added to the agenda for our next meeting? Yeah. Um, if anyone has updates for um, being liaisons to other committees, we present them there. Yeah. No. Kind of start to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Checking in with them. I appreciate that. Uh, and a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. You guys, before I ask for it, you say it. Before I ask for a second, you're saying that. So you guys already vote. All in favor. It's your name. <laughs>